I'm Kirsten and I am the teacher. And I am Lillian and I'm the athlete. Slide of NWABA logo. Appropriate interactions. In this video, we will be discussing the ways to interact appropriately with an individual with a visual impairment. First of all, when you approach someone with a visual impairment, you should always introduce yourself and include your name, such as, Hi, my name's Kirsten. What's your name? I'm Lillian. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. If you are approaching someone that you know, always make sure that you approach starting with your name and let, to let the person know who you are. Hi, Lillian. It's Kirsten. Hey, Kirsten. How's it going? It's good. How about you? I'm doing well. When leaving the person, you should always let them know that you are leaving, as well as making sure that they are near something that they can touch, such as a wall, a table, or and are oriented to the space. Approaching a person who has a guide dog. You may have noticed that we have a guide dog in this video. As you approach someone with a guide dog, make sure that you don't interact with the guide dog and don't introduce yourself to the guide dog first. Introduce yourself to the person and then you can ask more about the guide dog, such as, Lillian, what's your guide dog's name? His name is Spinoza. Thanks that's, for asking. That's a really cute name. Thanks. Make sure that you don't interact with the dog. Give the dog food, treats, toys, or anything, unless the person whose guide dog it is has said okay. Descriptions and directions. When giving descriptions and directions, make sure that you are very descriptive. Avoid using descriptions such as over there, over here, just like this, so that you can act, you can add as much description as possible so that, that the person is able to replicate that. Such as if you're describing a jumping jack, you might talk about standing straight up with your feet shoulder width apart, your arms at your side, and then you jump out so that your feet are wide apart, your arms are up in a V as if your body is making an X. When you go to a restaurant, you might ask the person if they would like you to read the menu to them and they can say yes or no, but allowing that person to order for themselves and to advocate for themselves. You can use the clock face as a way to describe directions when you are guiding someone, whether that is for a specific sport or activity or when you're describing where things are on the plate, such as your mashed potatoes are at noon and peas are at three o'clock. Additionally, when giving descriptions, make sure you avoid words such as watch out or be careful and instead give adequate descriptions such as there's a stick in front of you, you are going to want to step right over it. In all things, you want to treat the individual with a visual impairment with respect and treat them as you would like to be treated, such as letting them know if they have a spot or stain on their clothing privately. You also don't have to avoid words such as look, watch, or see. It's appropriate to ask a question such as, Lillian, did you see the soccer game yesterday? Uh, I did. <clears throat> it, was, uh, it was good. Good, I'm glad. I, did. I watched it too. I really love soccer. Asking the appropriate questions. There are appropriate and inappropriate things that you can ask someone with a visual impairment. It's appropriate to ask things such as, Lillian, can you describe your vision to me so that I can adequately guide you while you are skiing? Uh, yes, um, <clears throat> it's best if you ski behind me. Um, I can see things up close, but not far away, and I have blind spots in the center of my vision. Awesome, thanks, that's really helpful. When interacting with someone with a visual impairment, make sure that you're aware of your surroundings. Make sure that you don't move furniture or belongings of someone without letting them know first and giving someone the opportunity to orient to a new space and providing adequate verbal descriptions. Lillian, is there anything else you would like to add? Um, I would just really emphasize, you know, treat someone like you would be, tr you know, you wanted to be treated. Thank you, Lillian, for your time and thank you all for watching. For more, visit the Sports Adaptations page at www.nwaba.org. Thank you for watching. Thank you to the Washington State School for the Blind for allowing us to use their campus in the making of these videos. Thank you to Guide Dogs for the Blind who create partnerships between people, dogs, and communities. Slide of NWABA logo.